Welcome back guys to Tractors, Trails, and Living Free. And you probably saw from our uh, our last video, or uh, I guess it would be a couple of videos ago, where we got the John Deere tractor stuck down in the creek bottom there. And we used the Husqvarna to try to run a uh, an electric winch to pull it out. And while it was successful for a little bit, uh, for some reason or another, it stopped this tractor dead in its tracks. And we ended up having to tow it out as you saw with the John Deere 430 once we got it unstuck. So what we're gonna do, you know, we're coming up on mowing season. Now I should probably preface this by saying, it was kind of warm in Ohio a couple times the past couple weeks. As you see right now, it is snowing. It is snowing and it is below freezing right now in Ohio. So for some reason or another, maybe we won't be mowing as soon as we thought, but mowing will be coming up and this is the tractor we use for mowing this property. So uh, just want to tell you about our video here. We're going to try to figure out what we need to do to get this thing running again. And then we're going to have a second part of the video where we're going to try to address an idea I have about winching for the John Deere 430. And I'm really going to need you guys' suggestions on this because I have some ideas, but I'll appreciate anything. Anyone who knows anything about these John Deere garden tractors, any advice you can offer to keep me from maybe killing the John Deere 430 like I did with this one uh, with the winter, or any suggestions you may have, they'll be strongly, strongly solicited. So let's... Uh, We've got the tractor here, so let's go ahead and uh, look at it. We'll try try a couple things, try to start it, and uh, we'll see what it's doing, and then we'll just try to figure it out. So we'll be back in this. All right, guys, we're back. So really quick, before we try to do anything here, just want to kind of bring you up to date. Um, so we did try to jump this thing once we got it up here, as you saw in the video, with the John Deere 430. And it, it wasn't doing anything. I just assumed maybe the battery's too dead or or who knows. Who knows what was going on. And you know, we kind of spent, you know, a couple hours working on getting that tractor out. So at that point we kind of kind of reached the end of our rope there. Um so what I did go ahead and do is uh once we got this back in the shed, I went ahead and used that uh that Viking battery charger. And I went ahead and I made sure just to fully charge this battery all the way up or to make sure that that was not the problem and make sure we didn't ruin the battery, short the battery out so that it was still a viable battery. So uh, what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and, and show the start up here and uh, kind of let you know what's going on. So reaching up to the ignition here, we got the parking brake set, battery's fully charged, and we're going to go ahead and turn it to start here. Now. Nothing. Absolutely nothing was happening there, even though we got a strong battery. So, my first thought there was that, well, I'm not even hearing the starter clicking, so nothing's nothing's turning the starter on. So, what I wanted to do was go ahead and turn the key to the on position, and uh, I want to go ahead and try to uh, jump over the starter solenoid here. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. From here to the starter, and a wire from the uh, ignition and battery um, coming to this terminal. What happens is, as you can see, that this is there's some other power cables here, a, a neutral and a hot. And what happens is there's an electromagnetic plunger in there, and it comes up and basically provides a contact point between these two. Now, if your starter solenoid's bad, this that's not going to work anymore. The, the, it'll never come up and make that contact. So, a common technique is to go ahead and try to jump across these two terminals with anything metal. Now, I want to preface this: if you if you don't if you're not familiar with this process, if you don't know what you're doing, you probably shouldn't try this. So, just for the sake of being as safe as possible, I want to let you know this does involve um, closing an electrical circuit with a piece of metal that you're going to hold. I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use these tin snips here. They do have insulated handles, they have plastic all over them, so I should be able to do it. But again, I want to advise you, you definitely could, could do damage if you don't know what you're doing here. You could uh, you could short out something, you could short it onto the frame, you, you, could, you could do a lot of damage. You could fry some wires, possibly even damage the battery. So once again, I'm not advising you do this. Um, the, the most safe way would probably be to attach a wire and screw it onto these two terminals here and then turn the switch on. Um, I don't have such a wire with terminals connected to it right now. So we're just gonna go ahead and just do a quick connection just to see if when we turn this switch on, if it'll start that starter going. 
Because if it does, then you know maybe we maybe we need to replace the starter salon. Maybe not. So let's go ahead and give it a try. So I'm gonna turn the key to the on position, which would be the run position. Okay. So jumping that starter solenoid does allow the engine to start cranking. The starter motor engages and it does start spinning the engine. But it's not starting for some reason. It's cranking, but it's not starting. And, and there's no reason to believe anything else is wrong with this. There's plenty of fuel in it. The fuel's on. There, there's no reason to believe it wouldn't keep running here. So I gotta do a little bit more investigating. All right, let's get down tight here. Now I believe this engine is a Kawasaki FR730V as you see. I believe it has a, a, a fuel pump on it somewhere. So um, there, there is one more element. Not if just because we jumped this doesn't automatically mean everything is on. So let's go ahead and check this out and see, see what's going on here. Now, I just want to let you know beforehand, I um, I did uh, was was able to find a wiring diagram here just in case um, on the internet. It's it was an okay diagram. It's not as good of a schematic as I would prefer as far as chasing down every wire, but I think it gave me the general idea. So um, what it told me was that uh, there there is a fuse in the system, and, and here's the one that seems readily obvious. Now I said it was a 20 amp fuse, but there is a 10 amp fuse here so I don't know if that was changed by the uh, by the dealer that set it up before the original owner got it or you know the original owner so let's pull that let's have a look at it okay so you see that little u-wire there in the middle looks like it's pretty much intact but let's just go ahead and make sure here we're gonna use a continuity tester and just to make sure Put this on the one end. You know, one thing I should do, just to, now that I think about it, is I haven't used this in a while, so I probably should make sure we got a good battery in there too, because the way these work is that when, when a battery that's in here runs a uh, electrical charge through here, if there's continuity here, this will light up. So it could be that this fuse ain't working, but let's go ahead and make sure we got a, uh, a good battery in here just to be sure. So we'll be back in just a second. All right, guys, we're back. And uh, just turned out, uh, actually I did have a dead battery in that continuity tester, so making sure before we get started here let's go ahead and just clip it end to end see the little light in there all right so we're ready to go now so let's go ahead and grab that fuse again clip on the one side clip on the other side see the light coming on so we do have continuity through here so this fuse is is working still now i don't know why it's a 10 amp fuse but I mowed with it for two seasons with it like that. So so I probably will change it to a 20 amp fuse uh, no matter what happens here, but it's, it's not the deal breaker as far as it running. So let's go ahead and reinstall this one. And the idea here is that we, the starter solenoid may be bad, but we're gonna check everything out first before we get to that point, just because it's not a really expensive part probably runs about $15, 10 to 15 bucks or something like that. Um, and bought one in a while, so I'm not sure on that price, but it's not an expensive part, but you know, I'd rather, if it's something simple, let's figure that out first. So on the wiring diagram, it says there's a second fuse in this harness somewhere. And I'm looking all under here. It's a little rat nest of cables here. And it seems to be the only one. Wait a minute. So, okay, so this harness goes down underneath the battery tray here. Let's keep looking underneath there. Let's 
go ahead and see if we can focus in there. I know this panel does come off, but I don't think we need to take it off. So let's just go ahead and poke around in there. I don't see nothing over there by the steering column where it goes down through there. It does look like there's a wire from the battery that does ground down to the frame. There's a plug, a connector. Up. Oh, what do we got here? There we go, there's another fuse connection. Now this is a, tw a 20 amp fuse. We'll try to slip this zip tie like thing off. So this is a 20 amp fuse down here. Let's go ahead and pull that and check it for continuity. May have an issue. The lighting's not great, but we, we might have a break there. Let's check it out. We got nothing. We got nothing. So I do think we have an actual break there. So this is a 20 amp fuse, a little blade type fuse. Let's go ahead and grab one of those and put it in there and let's give this another try. So we'll be back in a second. All right, guys, I think we got a better camera angle here just in case you don't see where this is. So this is attached to that harness that's coming through the, through the top. Um, and here's that fuse holder right here. We did round up a, a new uh, 20 amp fuse there. Looks like we're nice and uh, connected there. We're gonna go ahead and slip this in there. And while I'm doing this, I, I definitely wanted to explain that that wire diagram, that wiring schematic, like I said, not as good as uh, I would hope. So see, it's in there now. Slide the thing back over it. See if we can't get it focused there. Yeah, we got there. We go. Um, so yeah, I mean, this I've seen some really good wiring schematics where you can trace you know wire from location to location to location. And uh, now we got that in there. So you can trace it from location to location to location. You could you could almost rebuild the whole uh, harness from that actual wiring diagram. This was not as good. It basically just showed a picture of a generic harness, and there was a uh, a picture of the. There were two. It was one fuse that it didn't show where it was connected to, and another that showed it um, connected somewhere to the end, but it didn't give any reference point. So uh, it wasn't the easiest one to use, but I think it, it may have been adequate for our purposes here. So. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and give this another try then. So we've got we did have a broken fuse. We have so we know there's definitely something wrong there. We replaced that fuse. Uh, there's no reason to not go ahead and give it a try now. See if it'll start up for us. So let's go ahead and cover this uh, cover these terminals back up. Now here's the thing: if it still do doesn't do anything. I really would think that starter solenoid will have to be replaced. If it does start, then we saved a, I didn't say a lot of money, probably saved about 10 bucks or so, but we definitely saved a, ordering it apart from uh, online, waiting for it for a few days and, and all that. So let's go ahead and give it a try here and hope for the best. So go ahead and choke it a little bit. Parking brake's still set. We do got those done, covered. Did I put that 10 amp fuse back in there? Yes, I did. All right, let's give her a try. didn't have to replace the solenoid or anything um well, that was a pretty easy fix i guess um if you're familiar with these tractors a little bit more than i am or or these harnesses maybe uh you can leave in the comment section below try to just explain explain to me actually educate me a little bit why why that fuse is the gatekeeper for everything here running um because it seems like the starter solenoid should work 
Anyway, it's just connected. It looks like it's just connected to the ignition switch and the and the battery. This connection here, this might be coming from underneath there, maybe. So that's a possibility. I'm gonna throw that out there right now that this might be connected to that fuse down there. But just let me know, like maybe explain to me why why I wasn't able to start it even when I jumped the uh, starter solenoid. Maybe you can kind of just explain the pathway there so for future reference I'll understand that. Um, but yeah, it looks like we got this fixed for now. Um, so I guess we're going to be ready for mowing. Um, I'll change that that other fuse, that 10 amp, back out to a 20 when I get a chance. Probably when it's a lot warmer. Right now it's sopping wet out here, cold and snowing. So uh, it ain't going to be today. And we are we did just go over 100 hours on this thing. I think it's like 101 hours. So we're probably going to do in an upcoming video, we'll probably just go through the 100 hour service on this thing. And uh, try to go through that with you because it's something we need to do anyway, just as proper maintenance and uh, might be something that's helpful to some of you who have tractors like this. This tractor is very similar to a lot of their tractors. It's, a, it's the same frame as a lot of them. It's a little bit bigger than some of them and it has some rear tires and the transaxle is different, but, um, and it might have an upgraded engine. I know some of these have, uh, I think Kohler, Kohler command engines, I believe. Uh, but in general, it should be all the same. So we'll probably go ahead and do in the future, we'll probably do a, an oil change on it, change the spark plugs, check the blades. Uh, feel pretty good about the battery now because uh, we charge it and it seems like it's holding the charge now. So even though we needed to jump it before we actually took it down with the winch to, to do that. So maybe that had something to do with the, that fuse blow, I don't know. Um, but, but like I said, and I want to explain this really quick. Um, we, again, we hooked that, that winch directly to the battery. So maybe if, if, if you understand what was going on there, maybe you can explain to me uh, why that voltage draw would end up popping a fuse that really kind of runs, I guess, I guess the fuel pump and the starter solenoid. Um, but I had it connected directly to the battery, so I, I just assumed it was only drawing from the battery. So maybe you can explain that to me. I know we got some subscribers and viewers who are who are much more uh, experienced with uh, these engines and the John Deere's and such. And and uh, you know, I learn what I can along the way that I pick up. But but I know there's people here that they are probably mechanics and probably can really explain to me what's going on there. Um, other than that, we are going to close this up. And uh, we're going to come back for the second half of this video. I want to kind of just throw out uh, kind of an idea I've had. That I'm, I'll, I won't uh, spill the beans on it right now, but we'll just go ahead and, and go over to it, and uh, we'll be. Ex I'll show you what my idea is, and I'm going to need some, maybe some more advice from you, or at least some opinions about it. Uh, I'll let you know what I have in mind, and uh, well, we'll just cover it there. So we'll be back in just a second. We are gonna uh, try to do something today. I was, uh, I was thinking with that winch, you know, it would have been nice if we could have ran the, the power off the battery here, and maybe had the winch connected somehow to this tractor. And I kind of had going through my mind, you know, like buying a different bunch of different components, and uh, and maybe having to do some fabrication or something to try to try to find a way to make this work. And I found something online that I think might save me some time. So, show it over here. This is the Hallmaster hitch receiver mount. And what I was thinking I might have to do would be to, to weld something up uh, that might fit onto the three point hitch or maybe even connect to the frame. And, uh, and when I saw this here on, uh, on the ad, I thought, well, that's kind of perfect because this connects through a, to a standard uh, hitch there little two inch square tube and I remembered that I had the uh, the Rug uh, weight rack and uh, rear hitch over here the, this is the first thing we put on right after we installed the three-point hitch in the three-point hitch video remember we have this and this already has a receiver tube on it so my idea was maybe I could uh, maybe I can put this on the three-point hitch connect the Hallmaster uh, hitch mount or winch mount I'm sorry into here and uh, might save me a lot of the time as far as uh, putting a bunch of components together to make this work if there's already something available 
retail that might make this happen. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and install this. And I'm going to put that on, and then I'm going to have to do a little bit more explanation to you because I'm a. Uh, I kind of like your opinions. I'm going to let you know what I have in mind, and uh, maybe you guys can save me a little bit of time if you have some better ideas or know of some parts suppliers that can uh, help me out with the electrical part. So let's go ahead and get this installed right now. So let's go ahead and pull the pull the lens pins out of the bottom. Now this is a category one hitch, but one thing I found is that the uh, the outside to outside pin width of this thing is a little bit wider than this uh, than the hitch is. So I did have to undo one of the uh, one of the chains there in the middle. That way you can spread the forks out, or the uh, I'm sorry, the uh, the lower three point hitch arms out far enough to get this on. Let's get the bottoms pinned in here. And let's actually do it right. All right, let's get the top one connected here. That's connected. Let's go ahead and grab the uh, the hitch receiver mount. See where it sits. Now I'll let you know what my plan is, and maybe I, you guys can help me out here. Okay. It is kind of nice. It does come with another hitch pin, so. There we go. I don't know why it is when it's cold outside. When it's cold outside, everything seems to get stiffer and become kind of a pain, but it's on. Okay. So the, the hitch we used last time, I believe it's a 5,000 pound uh, Badlands hitch. And it will sit on this and it does line up to these holes right here on the insides but it looks like the base of it is not as wide as this so it, it is this wide that's the correct dimension but it looks like for this it looks like it's for maybe for some of their their heavier duty like their 9,000 and 12,000 pound winches I don't know um, but it looks like the the pins for it line up a little bit shorter here so I'll have to mark those and I'll have to go ahead and uh, get a metal bit and drill holes for the front part of that. And I think that'll leave enough room in between here and here for the fair lead for the cable. So what I was thinking, and here's where I want you guys to kind of hear me out and kind of just let me know your ideas, is that if this is something that, that needs to be able to be disconnected from time to time, I don't want to have to do some major undoing, undoing of wiring when I do it. So what I had in mind was to maybe, I'm going to have to take the seat pan off, or the, the fender pan, whatever you like to call it. Uh, I was going to run two pretty heavy gauge cables matching the cables that come off the winch. And what I wanted to do was maybe somewhere here, and you let me know if you have any good ideas for this, I figured I would run the, the red and black cables from directly from the battery in between the frame rails here and come up here somewhere and this is what I haven't figured out yet somewhere here that's not going to interfere with the movement of the three-point hitch um, somewhere where I can basically install like a rear electrical power point so what I'd like it to be ideally would be uh, some kind of weatherproof connector that I can attach to metal that's out of the way of everything have two terminals on the back of it that are permanently connected to those heavy gauge wires coming from the battery 
and then have two open pins for the, the ground and the positive, and then maybe it either extend the cables on the winch or if they're long enough on their own, connect those. So it's almost like I have a rear weatherproof permanently installed rear power point. Um, when I look at it right now, obviously connecting to these, that's that's going to interfere with these uh, the, the rock shaft here. Down here by the hitch might be an option. Uh, that shouldn't be in the way of any moving parts, but it is closer to the ground. Let's see. And there's a possibility when I get the C pan off that I may end up actually finding some uh, some other section of frame that might be a, a decent way because I could install it somewhat here, maybe in this area where it wouldn't interfere with the wheel itself or any any of the movement there. Nothing with the mower lift mechanism. Or on the other side, there might be something mirrored that's pretty similar. So, uh, I don't know. That's where I want your ideas, guys. Uh, I can I can rig something up to make this work. But, you know, I, I kind of thought the idea of this, this uh, rear power point with, a, with a, like a rubber or plastic weatherproof cover that could fold down over top of it might be a good way to go. And it might be able to be used for some other things. Maybe a... Maybe an actuator, or maybe some kind of rear, you know, temporary rear lighting or something. But I just kind of thought that that permanent power point might be a good idea. Now I have looked online and I've seen some things that, that kind of have one for, um, they have like a one terminal, uh, one for a, uh, for like a one run. So you can get like two of them, put them right beside each other, like one for the positive, one for the ground. But what I really like to find is something with like a, a load and a line terminal for the ground and the positive. So, and then install that here somewhere. So feel free to get in the comment section and let me know any ideas you have on that. But that is the plan. Not that we need a, a hitch, uh, a winch right away for this. I'm going to try to not do anything dumb like getting that thing stuck down in the creek bottom again. But if you kind of see what's going on here. It's kind of a neat, clean setup here. I think this this might be a way where if we ever needed the hitch again, the hitch again, or, I'm sorry, the winch again, we could just bring it onto this hitch as it's permanently attached to this part, bring it down and, and connect it in, get the wire leads connected to some permanent power point right around here or something. Just make it a quick uh, install that could be disconnected and, and uh, connected really quick. So that's what we have in mind for this. Be a future project we'll probably just try to make a little progress on it here and there and uh like i said this is this is one of those videos where i'm going to really ask for your interaction on this because um, i have ideas but i guarantee if i do it my way there will be comments and videos that you maybe you should have done it this way and i'll read that and think you're right you're absolutely right i should have done it that way so just once again just asking for your input on this you kind of see the platform that we're working with here and uh, you kind of know I'm going to bring power back here somewhere. So if you have any uh, any advice about the routing or about that final connector I'm, I'm looking for, it'd be much appreciated. So thank you guys all for watching. And uh, we will uh, catch you next time on Tractors, Trails, and Living Free.